Whoa! Oh no, he's got me on the line, come on! Oh, loads of traction off the mark. Come on! This thing is quick! If like the rest of Australia, or even the rest of the world, you want to buy a dual cab ute, does that mean you have to give up hot hatch levels of performance? In the corners, probably yeah, but if you give your ute a tune like that one, can it beat a hot hatch in a straight line? Let's find out. Before we get into the racing, have you subscribed to our channel yet? If you like drag races, we're going to have one like this every single week. So get up there and smash that subscribe button. Now, first things first, that Amarok is not a standard Amarok. It has been tuned by our friends at Evolve Technic, who do all sorts of cool things to Ferraris and McLarens and other really cool cars. It's been given a stage two tune, so it now has 240 kilowatts and 700 newton meters. And according to the people at Evolve Technic, it should do naught to 100 in mid sixes, mid to high sixes, which puts it smack bang in the territory of this GTI. This is the 8th generation Golf GTI, 180 kilowatts, 370 newton meters from a 2 litre 4 cylinder turbo. It should do 0 to 100 according to Volkswagen in 6.4 seconds, so let's see what it does. It's light this car compared to that Amarok, it weighs 1,463 kilos. That one over there, 2,350 and it's also got my good friend Dan Gardner who's a bit heavy at the best of times. Dan. Why does your Amarok look so angry? It looks evil almost. First word that springs to mind when I look at this car, Alex, is subtle. Uh, it's a wolf in very, very brightly coloured sheep's clothing, I think. I do feel like I'm upholding the honour of the entire hot hatch community over here. Hell of a weight on your shoulders, but either way, it's going to be a win for Volkswagen. That's true. Okay, so today we're going to do our usual deal. We're going to start with a launch control run, then do a street start and a roll race. Let's see how these two compare, because I think it's going to be pretty close. Three, two, one. Whoa! Oh no, he's got me on the line, come on! Oh, loads of traction off the mark. Come on! This thing is quick! Yeah, come on, Golf! Where's the Golf? I can't see him, he's in my blind spot. Oh, I'm reeling him in, yes! Oh no, he's, he's coming past! Where is he coming from? That's not possible! Yeah! Oh! Oh! I swore I had him! My heart was in my mouth for a really long time there because it's quite soft to get away uh, in the GTI and that Amarok just took off. But stayed with it, did not panic, reeled him in. So that was bang on Volkswagen's claim, 6.4 seconds to 100 k's an hour, probably a 14.4, 14.5 quarter. Oh man, you gave me a big fright then. You just took off from the line. You were in my blind spot for so long, I, I didn't know where you were. I didn't know if you'd left the start line, if you'd already gone, but like that was close. But you got me in the end, longer legs. For about half of that race, I thought I was going to let everybody who loves hot hatches down. Uh, but thankfully, the mighty GTI stormed home to take the win. Well, this Amarok in its current state of tune hasn't exactly embarrassed one ton newts either. A one ton you should not be capable of doing that. That was amazing. Uh, one thing I did notice as I was uh, staring really worried at the back of your car was that it sounds a bit odd. What's going on there? Yeah, that is of course the sound of a three litre diesel. It's not, it's fake, all right. It's not a bad sound, it just doesn't quite correlate with what I thought an Amarok diesel should sound like. So let's uh, give a bit of a sound off between these two cars and see what our viewers think in the comments below. So give it a rev. So it's like a sound symposia and you can almost pick the noise you want it to be. Is that right? Yeah, kind of. It's, it's a bit like the SQ5 that we tested a while ago. It's got a, like a, a sound generator in the exhaust. It's completely synthetic. It sounds quite convincing, but it's definitely not in any shape or form real. <laughs> when you turn it on, it almost sounds a bit V8-ish, which is kind of cool. But I'll give this one a rev, see what uh, the GTI sounds like. <laughs> There's a soft limiter and I just got an eco tip warning on the dial here <laughs> saying don't press accelerator while stationary so I don't think the car liked it either. That thing sounds so much better when it's actually in action. It's, it's a really good, good sounding little four cylinder turbo. 
It could be noisier though, I think. So anyway, jump into the comments below and let us know which of these two you prefer the sound of. All right, mate, let's get into another launch control run, see if we can find some time. Three, two, one. Oh, I lost some time, big time. Oh, that felt way better. Oh no. Yes, keeping it in that torque band. Manual shifting just before red line. Oh, Alex is way back. Oh, this is going to be so much closer. Oh, I was much slower, but am I going to get him? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot pick that. That was too, that was too close. I think he was faster and I was slower, but I just came through for the win. I tried a different launch technique and uh, it didn't work. We got a bit of wheel spin and then the car bogged down. So that was a 6.7 to 100 k's an hour. Chasing down, down like that reminds me of the drag race we did between the 911 Turbo and the Audi RS3, which was also really, really close at the finish line. You can watch that video by clicking the pop-out banner up there. Obviously this car doesn't have paddle shifters. I'm having to use the gear selector down here. It's the wrong way around. It's, I'm having to go against every intuitive part of me to push forward to change up a gear, but seem to do the trick. Okay, Dan, usual street start procedure. Have the car in its comfort settings, rest it on the brake, and then when they say go, simply flatten the throttle and let the car figure it out, and I'll meet you at the finish line. Uh, am I allowed traction control on or off for this? Traction on, please. Boring. <laughs> I need to figure out how to turn stop start off in this because <laughs> I can't wait for the car to wake back up. Now, where is it? Where is it? Three, two, one. Oh, 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 very close. Once I get boost pressure, oh no, no. Oh, but I've got him. The golf's already ahead. It's not looking great. Good win for the GTI. Once that little hot hatch finds some traction, it is gone. Ugh. A little bit of hesitation, bit of wheel spin and an ESC intervention, but finally figured it out and got us to the finish line first, which is the most important thing. How was it, Dan? Did you uh, have any traction control interventions? No, I've got literally nothing to blame. <laughs> It was, uh, once boost pressure builds up, it has that lovely sort of sensation of launching and then all I saw was a little red golf disappearing off ahead of me. It was a bit of an unfair fight for the Amarok in all honesty, but maybe it'll get uh, some redemption back in a roll race. What do you reckon? Interesting to see that. And then perhaps after that, can we do a towing race? What is the towing capacity of yours? Three tons, three and a half? I reckon I can tow about two of you. <laughs> Okay, Dan, for the roll race, to give the Amarok uh, the best possible chance, I think we keep the cars in their sport mode, but we put the gearbox into manual so that you can hold the, the engine in its uh, torque band and then flatten it at 50 k's an hour and see you at the finish line. Understood. Uh, when you say see me at the finish line, ahead or behind, don't go there. I mean, see you in my rear view mirror. <laughs> yes. Fifty k's an hour, even pegging, and flatten it. Oh, oh, we got a good jump as well. No, I thought I had an advantage there, but oh, see you later though. It was very even for the first couple of hundred meters. As soon as that golf spools its turbo up, don't stand a chance. But the golf runs away with it. <laughs> He's gone. Really gapping him now. There we go, over the finish line, two hundred k's an hour. Wow, that was a decisive bludgeoning. That was a good jump from you, Dan. The response from that Amarok is really impressive. Yeah, that, that it gives you this false sense of hope that there's some chance I'm going to win and then you just blast past as always. It also gives me a moment of terror as I think I'm about to lose, but uh, yeah, the GTI has the legs. So how fast are they? Well, with some finessing, we went even quicker in the GTI. With this run beating its official acceleration claim to record 6.2 seconds to 100 and 14.3 over the quarter mile at 164 k's an hour. The GTI does have a launch control system that holds the revs at 4000 RPM, but we found the quickest way was to turn ESC all the way off 
and to launch the car ourselves with fewer revs on board. The Amarok's initial launch phase is impressive, and it actually beats the GTI to 80 k's an hour. But its best times of 6.7 to 100 and 14.9 over the quarter mile at 147 k's an hour are half a second adrift of the lighter and slipperier hot hatch. Still, it's a strong showing from the tuned dual cab, and if you'd like to see other matchups like this one in future motor drag battles, let us know in the comments below. Yeah.